ladies and gentlemen, man, it, it's unfortunately sad for me to share this with you guys, man. The act, actor who played Omar from The Wire, the iconic, iconic actor that he is. He has many other roles, but iconic actor that he was. Michael K. Williams tragically lost his life and passed away. Before we get to them stories, I want y'all to hit that like button and notification bell and sit tight for this one. It's gonna be a little bit sad. Let's go, y'all. Report. Actor Michael K. Williams has died. The actor, known for his role on the hit HBO show The Wire and most re more recently in Love Counter Country on HBO, was found dead inside his apartment in Brooklyn. Police say a family member discovered Williams' body. Police also say drug paraphernalia was found at the scene. And Williams was a Brooklyn native. He was 54 years old. And we will bring you more information on the story as more information comes into our newsroom. I mean, that's, that's tragic enough to see, you know, the iconic rapper and the way they're talking Cover about girl, clean it. As far as the way they're a saying that he died, you know what I mean? And that part is uh, it's sad alone. And I want to read to you guys how he died. I got clips to play of him speaking as well that let me have my own determined factors. But I kind of just want to read what they said. Now, they're saying Michael... You know, he was found dead in his New York apartment. Police said the 54-year-old actor who played Omar was discovered by a family member. Now, drug paraphernalia was found at the scene. I wish they didn't add that because until the, um, the blood samples come in, but they added that part nevertheless. Now, they're saying a whole lot about this situation, if you guys don't know. They're looking at it and, and saying basically what a lot of people want to feel and just say is guilty. They're, they're blaming it on drugs. I don't want to do that until we see furthermore of more proof. You know, if it makes sense to you, I, I want to give him that. And if he, he owes at least that to give to anybody. You know what I mean? Anybody deserves that part at least. But Omar, you know, speaking of him and what he did, they're, 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 they're claiming a lot of things that we have to sit back and, and digest it in a way where we have to understand what it is. Now, when it comes to him, it, it, it's sad to see that he died in this type of way. Now, Isaiah Whitlock Jr., you guys do know him from the show. Remember, he played the um, politician dude. Uh, let, let me see if I can share that on the screen with you guys. Now, he's saying, shocked and saddened by the death of Michael K. Williams, one of the nicest brothers on the planet with the biggest heart. Now, you got Quest Love. He said, please, God, no, I can't take this pain. Death cannot be this normal. You know what I mean? You got Warwood Jr., the comedian genius, who's also on Comedy Central, and he's with The Daily Show as well. He said, all I want for black entertainers is for them to be able to grow old. You know what I'm saying? It's like we, we don't grow old, y'all. We lose ours real quick. Now, he interviewed on The Here and Now, and I wanted to hear some of that. As communities call for police reform and improve police roles on TV series like The Wire and... The youth at the center of what it does, like doing things like leveraging their strengths so that they could come up with their own solutions around, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, community-based problems as mm -hmm. opposed to always relying on traditional uh, uh, police interventions. And... Talk a little bit about specifically what NYC Together does in terms of, I guess- Working together to create precinct-based, precinct-level uh, protocol, which reduces juvenile recidivism. They also support officers in, in doing things like in, in avoiding criminal solutions for social situations. There's also, um, they have an organ a program called uh, Rapid Youth Referral Pro- Shout out to Michael for doing his things with the youth and doing it with the kids. Now, it, it's it's kind of funny that they mentioned the drug situation because he spoke about, you know, intimately about his former drug uses and what he went through and what he had to do over the years for those youths. So I wanted you guys to take time as I, you know, go, go to that for a little bit more. I want to go to who he was and what he had to eloquently say about those usage of him, you know, going through a foundations of dealing with drugs, dealing with problems over the years and overcoming those things and seeing how it, it, it can help us 
as well. You know what I mean? Shortly after the, the production had ended of Lovecraft Country, to be, to be frank, um, I just, you know, I never, I just started therapy, uh, you know, and really taking that seriously and starting to unpack, um, like you said, the critic in my head and what and how that has affected my, my actions, my responses to certain situations, my relationships. So it's um, a very new process for me. You've been open in the past about your personal battle with substance abuse and how it affected you at different points in your life. And, and you so beautifully talk about that it is not just a snap thing. It's a journey. Recovery is a journey. And many times people will read a story about a 30-day rehab and life suddenly changes for that person. And it doesn't work like that. It is an ongoing battle. For you, doing this film that taps into substance abuse and the exploitation of people who are trying to find help. Um, how did that impact your your ability to, to look inside? Well, you know, Body Brokers, um, quite frankly, made me sick to my stomach. Mm -hmm. uh, when I, I, I was ignorant to the narrative and the, and the subject of, of what this movie was, was addressing. And I remember personally, you know, one of those many nights when I was crying myself to sleep listening to BB and CC Wine is I would I would see these these commercials about the um you know these uh, elaborate beautiful uh recovery centers you know mostly most of them was in Malibu and I would I would say man if I could get there maybe I could just get my life together and to think that that was um never really the the that was never the intent that for them and ever I don't I don't know Michael had a lot to share, you know, about his own causes and he was flipping through his own drugs situation. So I find it odd they say, I mean, people do have a setback where they revert and go back to the same, you know, drug binging and, and all that. But I just seen a man who changed and a man who shared a lot. I mean, he breaks down about his career, about what he did on The Wire. Ew. How many guns do you have? enough not me and mine we and not just the wire but also boardwalk empire be white i was in south africa filming a, a tv series for i believe nbc called the philanthropist i was working with the likes of uh james purefoy nev campbell jesse martin um and a whole slew of other people man we're having a great time filming down there the problem was for me i was probably having a little bit too much of a good time he was in the music business you know he was marky mark and the funky bunch he and i shared the same manager as i started to transcend into acting a young lady um judy she worked at the management office and started and would take on other acts and then, years later here i am doing the movie with mark Wahlberg in production i realized that i am I'm getting a glimpse of what my nephew, uh, Dominic DuPont, who served 20 years of his young adult life incarcerated, I started to get a glimpse of what his life was like. Man, this guy did a lot. The ambiance of what Michael was and what he's, you know, said. He explains his scars on the Opie radio show and he goes deep into it. I was given two opportunities to, um, to retaliate on this person that did that cut me. I had I'd never knew him before in my entire life, but post this situation, um, I had two opportunities. One per person offered to kill him for me. And all, all they said was, could you give me a picture of him and get an area where he, where he was at? I got the picture, I found out he hangs out in Crown Heights. And I never gave them that information. I didn't want his blood on my hands. And another time I, um, I ran into him was, um, I went to a friend's house in Jersey, and um, he was there. What? What? Sitting there, cause me and Mom, he's dead now. My friend who I, was, I went to go see is dead now. Um, and um, yeah, we used to hang out every Friday in Jersey. I go, I drive to Jersey, go hit the bars, and you know, get that old Jersey club, and you'd have that boom, 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 boom. Punka, <laughs> <laughs> punka. Um, yeah, so that was my Friday night. I would play dates, whatever, and then I would go hang out with them on Friday, nice group of guys. And one Friday, I went over there, and um, Dude was sitting there in gym shorts, just hanging out the house. And so uh, my buddy introduced me to him, like, hey, Mike, this is so-and-so, so-and-so, this is my friend. I looked back at him and said, boy, you don't remember me? He looked at me, he said, no. I said, I 
don't worry about me, but I got my wires crossed. I went back in the living room, I sat down, and I swear to you, you know that deal in that same when you see the devil, the angel sits on your shoulders and talking. I heard a voice say, go in the kitchen, get a butcher knife and stab him to death. Like I heard the voice in my head telling me to do that, and it scared me so bad that I had that kind of evil in me. I mean, this guy, you guys can go check out Opie Radio to hear the more of it, but I mean, this guy was legendary, man. Um, it, it hurts to see that he's dead. I love everything about Michael, man. Rest in peace to the philosopher, the great philanthropist, the activist, everything he was of isms to give back besides of being his own self. He loved loving everybody else, so to, to see him gone, man, it is... It's gonna be a tough one. Regardless of what people try to tell me, this is one of those type of losses that is gonna be hard to overcome. Hard to get through, man. I, I wanna say to his family and everybody, man, honestly, rest in peace. I hope you guys get some you know, closure out of this. I know it's somber news right now, man. It's, it's unfortunate, man. Look, man, I'm gonna get out of here. I'm your God bless one. Love your family, love your kids, and stay blessed. Make sure you guys find me on social media at DJ underscore bless one. Once again, at DJ underscore bless one. Love your family, love your kids, and stay blessed, gang.